Do I have a motion to consider the agenda? Motion. Thank you, Ms. Burge. I have a second. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Any discussion on the agenda? I have an item to add. Dr. Vogel. Um, consider approving out of state travel to Cross State Family Fitness Center in Slidell for the swim team to practice because the, of the inclement weather next week. They practice at Millbrook and um, it's supposed to be really cold. Yay. It'll be number, four. It'll be so, number 14. Um, it's going to be too cold for them to practice. Then they have their um, South State and State meet coming up. Because you had it at the bottom of number 14. Bump the executive to 15. Okay. Well, I thought we had some other travel stuff already. You want to add it in there? We do. Yeah, we had some out of state travel on the B. It's going to be the B, B4. Non B4. Is that where you want to put it? Yes. Okay. Okay. Anything else on the agenda? If not, I call for a vote. All in favor of accepting the agenda with the amendments added, let me indicate by saying yay. 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 Any opposers? That be none. Agenda is approved as amended. <clears throat> Bring us to our superintendent report. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Minutes. Yeah, consider approving the board minutes of September the 8th, 2022, September 15th, 2022, September 26th, 2022, and September 29th, 2022. Busy month. Motion. Thank you, Ms. Oda. We have a second. second. Thank you, Ms. Burge. All in favor of approving the minutes of the months of red, let them indicate by saying yay. 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 Any opposers? There be none. Minutes are approved. Now let's bring it to the superintendent. Um, we have the financial reports and your packet. Uh, report, report, accident report, and I included the Jason also talked about it, but you also have a Okay. Ms. Laura? I'll now be sharing your student work. Elementary had a great time in the month of September. Students Ms. Gerald, Ms. Walker, and Ms. Guy's class enjoyed their first golden closures of the year. September 7th was an opportunity to recognize our substitute teachers for their dedication. At the beginning of the month, students and staff enjoyed a leader parade and a PIS red, white, and you rally. All the ice came on the land for students to purchase and enjoy their year activity time. Members of the PBIS team spent time with WRJW sharing positive behavior incentives that are available to our students. The students were excited to see the ladies from the volleyball team in the morning drop-off line in September. On September 29th, students dressed in their favorite book here to kick off the AR meeting. The custodial staff was recognized for their tireless efforts. Students also participated in two fire drills this month. Students and staff are excited about the attendance incentives for October and November. If BRCES has the highest attendance rate in the district, the students will have an opportunity to tie the principal in the face. <laughs> September included so much at the middle school, from rallies to athletic events, incentives to field day. Students who scored proficient or advanced on their math test were treated to a field trip to the hangout with the youth. Students who grew on both of their math tests were treated to field day with the first games and food. Later in the month, the middle school hosted their first academic rally of the year where students were organized or recognized for their accomplishment on last year's state test, including 47 students who scored perfect scores. These students were also treated to a luncheon by the middle school PTO. 
The month ended with homecoming festivities, including dress up day, homecoming pep rally, and the crowning of this year's homecoming princess, Anna Grace Baker. PRC High School had a great fast paced September with several huge recognitions. We wrapped up homecoming week running our 2022 homecoming queen, Zoe Lockhart, football maid, Lindy Lewis, and homecoming king, Caleb Dice, along with a homecoming band. This was the first dance since COVID. NDE recently released top 10 districts for each subject area from the 2021-2022 school year. PRC is fifth in the state for college and career readiness, which is a huge accomplishment. Congratulations to our staff and students. Our PRC HS library celebrated National Band Book Weeks. In September, Band Book Week is an annual event celebrating the freedom to read. PRC HS librarian Ms. Fleming spotlighted current and historical attempts to censor books in libraries and schools around the world. Thank you, Ms. Fleming, for going out of your way to visit our classrooms to discuss this important topic. Construction has been ongoing with a new sidewalk awning covering the sidewalk that connects D Hall in the PAC, which is what we're calling the Performance Arts Center. They built it that. Attendance for the month of September was 91%. Our admin team has planned several incentives for October and November and have already seen an increase in student attendance. Currently, PRCHS is in the lead, meeting both PRC Elementary and PRC Middle School for our district attendance competition for the month of October. I speak on behalf of the student, high school student body that it would grow drastically if we had the opportunity to buy our first <laughs> currently has 10 students on level 3, 2 students on level 2, and 17 students on level 1. At the beginning of term 2, 4 students were able to transition back to the high school campus. For the month of September, the Endeavor School held its first energy bus rally. This rally was attended by all levels of students and had many fun and interactive activities. Level three students were also able to take part in a virtual field trip for the Mississippi Civil Rights and Department of History Museum. On October 6th, the Endeavor School held the Term One Level Three Celebration. Students were able to go fishing, play basketball, cornhole, eat all the pizza they cared to enjoy. They also held various education projects. This concludes my second board report. I want to thank the school board as well as the student body for allowing me to represent my parents. Thank you. All right, TJ, we'll um, give our operations. I'll start off with the uh, auditorium. Uh, building about 99% complete. Uh, the the hole was closed. <laughs> the hole was closed. Substantial completion is supposed to happen in, in October. I won't tell you what year, but October. <laughs> so, uh, the architect's going to start doing the, uh, the final punch list uh, this month, uh, which is going to be quite lengthy. Uh, so, hopefully, they'll um, we'll be able to use the auditorium while they're doing the punch list. Um, but He's going to start working on that. Uh, the, uh, the volleyball locker rooms and concession have been completed at the elementary uh, gym. Uh, the chair and dance facility right behind us, uh, they started on the foundation pad uh, this week. And uh, next week, they're going to start pulling up the slab and then the on all the stuff. Uh, they expect to have that building completed by the end of the uh, school year. <laughs> The uh, baseball and softball uh, concession stand and restroom building uh, should get underway uh, very, very soon, uh, as soon as tomorrow, but possibly uh, next week is probably more um, the expected start date. Uh, he's expecting to have that complete by the start of the season. The uh, baseball and softball field improvements, um, the, uh, the contract was signed this week uh, by Mr. Frazier on Tuesday, on your Tuesday. And um, so we're going to have our pre-construction meeting on that project on Monday uh, at the engineer's office. And I'll be able to give more 
solid dates, uh, timeline, uh, when they plan to begin that, that project after that. Uh, central office, we plan on going out for bids for uh, the renovations to build an H, like we discussed in previous meetings. Uh, we plan on going out in November, bids, and hopefully get work started in January. The access control and door hardware project that's currently out for bid. Uh, the bids come in on October 27th, uh, and uh, we should have those bids and a contract uh, available for consider the November 4th. Uh, the new football scoreboard that was donated by Coca Cola uh, of Hattiesburg uh, should be in very, very soon. Uh, Dollars uh, and Coach Joe and Coach and Coach Doc still uh, next week to uh, start planning on uh, getting that uh, that new store installed. A couple of updates from the uh, various departments: transportation. They're still looking for seven bus drivers and one mechanic. Uh, one of the mechanics uh, is retiring at the end of December for, for those positions back at the bus farm. Uh, they, uh, Coach Stockstill and, and Ms. Jamie, attended the, uh, the big chamber, chamber of Commerce business job fair last week uh, to, to try to recruit drivers. We uh, weren't very successful, but they were there with drivers. We're trying to fill those spots. Uh, October is Cyber Security Month. Our technology department's been sharing tips and tricks uh, to keep our network safe. Uh, we use a program called Know Before. Uh, what that program does is it's a training for all of our staff. It's a required training for all of our staff to take the uh, password, phishing emails, and things like that. What that program does is uh, it'll send out random fake emails to everybody. And uh, if you're reporting, you <laughs> great <laughs> job. And don't report it like you should and open the attachment or click the link that's in there. Um, Going to have a good training. We'll make so, a train. <laughs> and it keeps the uh, statistics and, uh, we, uh, that we can share with the, the individuals that need additional training. You know, get it's them better. Get it's them a better. reinforcement. Huh? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and lastly, uh, this week is National School Lunch Week. Uh, the Food Service Department has been celebrating this week by uh, giving treats and other incentives to our students. Uh, and all of our administrators are also helping us serve in the cafeteria. Uh, one way or the other uh, throughout the week. Uh, any questions? Mr. Burleson, I don't have any questions, but I'm sure that everybody here would agree that we really appreciate these weekly reports that you give us. And it's not always um, here at the board meetings, but the way that you present it to us each week on email, I really appreciate that. It makes me feel as a board member that I'm connected and that I know what's going on with our school. And I just wanted to tell you that your, your efforts are, are being seen and it's very much so appreciated. <laughs> you know, and it, it, you know, it's good that we still see there's a lot of progress being done around the campuses, and I know that community sees that as well. It's much appreciated, and we certainly like the way that you kind of stay in the breath of these projects. Also, thank you, Dr. Bowman. Okay. Thank you. I'd like to share some uh, recognitions that we have. Okay. District and school accountability ratings are in. The River County School District has earned a B rating for its performance in 2021 and 2021-2022 school year. Uh, Her River Central Elementary School, Middle School, and High School all have received a B rating. So we're excited about that. Congratulations to our teachers, our students, and every member of our team who have worked really hard to earn this achievement. We are only nine points from an A as a district and one point from an A, or less than one point from an A as a high school. So um, we will be coming with a new step. All right. Looking forward to that. And then Laura Kate has shared this already, but the River um, County School District is ranked number five in the state, which is really amazing. For our college and career readiness. This is the performance on ACT report. So thank you to uh, all of our teachers for their hard work and our students for the ACT and CTE for the work. 
also uh, please help me congratulate our employees of the month who have been recognized for going above and beyond for September. And at the elementary school, we have our um, teacher, Ms. Shelly Cullen, and support staff, Ms. Angela Dossett. At the middle school, we have teacher Amanda McDaniel and support staff Connie Moore. At the high school, we have teacher Marilyn Shielder and support staff Debbie Smith. At the Endeavor School, teacher Lashibra Christopher and support staff Brittany Bennett. And at our district, transportation support staff Alice Thibodeau, food service support staff Jessica Ledette Smith, district support staff Stephanie Smith, athletics and activities coach Liz Smith, and administrator of the month Chris Pins. Special congratulations to those. And I have a, a, another special recognition. Um, Mr. Hyman is going to come up and he is going to talk to you about all of the foreign exchange students that you have approved uh, come to our school district. Mr. Hyman. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bowen. Uh, board members, I am here for a couple different reasons, but mostly to thank the board. Uh, for changing the policy to allow up to seven exchange students this year, and we filled all seven spots. Okay, good deal. So, as um, I'm a teacher at the high school, I'm a coach, but really I'm here as a uh, beta club sponsor to introduce the seven exchange students. I think they all made it. Um, we decided to make all seven exchange students honorary members of Beta Club, and they are going to help our local club uh, start an initiative called Beta Around the World, where they're going to help us get in contact with students in other countries. And so we can share what Beta Club's all about, which really is about service, serving our community. So with that said, I think I've got all their names. Um, <laughs> you know the names, but um, I'm going to kind of alphabetical, alphabetical by first name. So Arjun from Spain, if you can come up. And I actually have a flag of their country to present to them. So if Arjun, if you could like head over to that end, open it, open the flag up. Uh, second Bay from Thailand. Daniel from Brazil. Dasha from Ukraine. Here from Spain, Gigi from Belgium, and Paula from Germany. If y'all could kind of just line up this way so you can show the school board members your flag and then we can turn around and show the audience your flag. <laughs> Absolutely. Great idea. Yeah. So y'all yes. <laughs> Why don't we bring them across the front over here? If y'all will come across the front and line up in the front. And in behind them, like in front. Mr. Jones, Mr. Jones. Yeah, I'll just, I'll sweep. I'll hold your arms. Right. 
mouth starting to hurt. <laughs> you got it. You do. Okay. <laughs> And if we can also have all the post packets stand up, so the school board can see those of us that make that commitment to host the speaker. If I can take just a couple minutes. Or June is a scholarship student, and I asked him to just take a couple minutes and kind of explain what the scholarship program is about, to be very quick.
couple of other things that we have, great things that we have going on in our school district. We had kindness day yesterday where we all wore blue and celebrate kindness. Right? Mm. So blue represents peace and kindness. So, really? Um, yeah. <laughs> So it was a way for um, all of our schools to, um, we, look, we did some anti-bullying um, strategies and uh, some classes so that uh, our students can be aware of bullying and um, and how to be And then also we have um, a district, the school district is conducting a district-wide campaign to help those affected by Hurricane Ian. And Ms. Um, Valerie Moran has met the lead that. Now we collect them um, donations. Oh, we are totally <laughs> 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 um, They'll be collecting donations Saturday at from 11, 8 to 11 in the high school parking lot. And we have the Kiwanis Fishing Trip, which is always um, a, a great event to go to, October 20th. Mr. Posey sent you an email about that. And October 23rd starts um, um, Red Ribbon Red Ribbon Week. Say that fast three times. Um, and that's a whole nother um, week of excitement for us. And that completes the report. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Well, it just kind of reminds us how many great things are happening in the district all the time. You know, it's, it's really great to have those students here to be able to participate in the cultural exchange. And I know they're learning and we're learning as well. So that's a great thing. Uh, and we look at the performance of the district, you know, a, a B and also top five of uh, state college and career readiness. All those things are very wonderful. It just shows all the hard work of all the administrators, just the entire team here. So we just want to thank everybody and then all the, the teachers and the administrators and the staff that got those awards being recognized. So I'd just like to give them a big hand as well. Yes. Again, uh, seeing those projects coming to completion. Mr. Burles, again, thank you for that. I'm looking forward to seeing that auditorium completed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you no, know, it's been a long time coming, but certainly uh, we, we're glad to get to, th to this point. So thank you so much for that. Okay, any other comments? Okay. Now we'll move on with our agenda. Could I have a motion to consider approving the following financial items? And if my agenda is correct, I'll be from item A through Q. Item A through Q. We have a motion. Make a motion we consider approving our following financial items A through Q. Thank you, Mr. Jones. We have a second. Second. Thank you, Ms. Burge. Any discussion on our financial items? If not, I'll call for a vote. All in favor of approving the following financial items, items A through Q, let them indicate by saying yay. 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 In the opposers, there be none. The motion passed unanimously. Move down to our bond issue. Could I have a motion to consider approving pay application number 26 to Colony Construction Company? Have a motion. motion. Thank you, Mr. Older. Have a second. Second. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Any discussion on pay application number 26 to call and construct? If not, I'll call for a vote. All in favor of approving pay application number 26 to call and construction company, let them indicate by saying yay. 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 Any opposers? There be none. Motion passed unanimously. Call for a motion to approve the consent agenda. And if the uh, board is so choosing, it'll be from item A through H. You know, we did add an item there in B4. So this is a consent agenda. Have a motion. Motion. Thank you, Ms. Burge. You have a second. Thank you, Ms. Oda. Call for a vote. All in favor of approving the consent agenda, item A through H. Let them indicate by saying yay. 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 Any opposers? There be none. Motion passed unanimously. Brings us to our policies. And we'll take these in sections as they're on our agenda. Could I have a motion to consider approving section A and section E of our policies with the exceptions of policy EBH, EFA, and AE? I have a motion. Motion. Thank you, Ms. Burge. Second. Thank you, Mr. Jones. 
in the discussion of those policies. Again, those policies were unchanged from previous. So we are uh, all in favor of approving section A and section E of policy. Let me indicate by saying yay. 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 Any opposes? There'll be none. Motion passed unanimously. Call for a motion to consider approving PRC administrative recommendation revisions to policy EFA and AE. Make a motion we consider approving PRC administration recommendation revisions EFA and AE. Thank you, Mr. Jones. We have a second. Thank you, Mr. Oldham. Any discussions on that? Uh, again, those two policies that there was some revisions on one was dealing with the uh, cybersecurity. I think they added a sentence and that says employees of the district shall complete and require security awareness training and be alert to those emails. Again, I think we've had some discussion about that already today. And I think we even discussed some opportunities for improvement as well. And that was on policy EFA. And the second policy was policy AE was the school academic year. I think the only change was that it went from a 60% day to a 63% day on those. Any other discussions on that? If not, I'll call for a vote. All in favor of approving PRC administrator recommended revision to policy EFA and AE, let them indicate by saying yay. 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 Any opposers? There be none. Motion passed unanimously. Call for a motion to consider reviewing and discussing PRC administrative recommend revision to policy EBH. So again, this is reviewing and discussion. It's not approved. Call for a motion. Motion. Thank you, Ms. Burge. It should be a second. Second. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Okay, on this particular policy, it was uh, EBH school facility rental. And uh, if you had an opportunity to look at that policy, you know, that was some, a good bit of the language was deleted and that was a couple of paragraphs added to it. And I had a question myself about the language that was removed from the policy. It gave a lot of uh, details about how we were gonna administer the policy. It, does that language appear anywhere else? Yes, sir, it will be part of our procedure for um, and it will be included in the application that um, the party fills out to use one of our facilities. Because now at the bottom of it, it has a PDF application attached to it. And I printed out the actual application. It didn't have any of that language in there. So I was thinking maybe I missed it. I'm not sure exactly what that language was. I kind of, I couldn't, didn't find it anywhere. Because I, I know- that EBH school facility <laughs> rental was the, um, <clears throat> so, yeah, the, the application that's attached to it right now, it's, it's kind of a short two-page document, and it may be somewhere else I didn't see it. I wasn't able to find it. So I know the language was removed, and I was looking for if this language appeared somewhere else. I didn't see. But, but the intent is to keep this language somewhere. Yeah. Okay. So and we will send that to you. Just make sure we have, okay. So we're not actually just eliminating this kind of streamlining this policy. Okay. Okay, all right. Yeah, again, so this was just a just reviewing and discussion. And we will actually vote on this at the next board meeting to approve those revisions. So we have an opportunity to actually go over that language, make sure we see exactly where it's located at and actually vote on it at that time. Okay. Next, I have a, could I have a motion to consider approving MSBA recommended revisions to a whole lot of policies. <laughs> and I will go over those to make sure that it's on the record. Policy BBABA, policy BCAC, 
policy CNA, policy DJD, policy DJEC, policy DJI, policy EFA, policy GABB, policy GABBA, policy GBN, policy GBRIA, policy GBRMB, policy AIAC, policy ADCAB, policy GBC, policy JBA, policy JCBE, policy JCDAE, policy JDE, and policy KM. Could I have a motion? Motion. Thank you, Ms. Burrs. Have a second. Second. Thank you, Mr. Jones. So, in, and again, in the way of discussion and also just for our viewing audience, we actually get an opportunity to get these policies before a meeting because they're quite lengthy. We get a chance to go over all of these policies, make sure there's anything that we see that maybe we have questions about. So we ask those questions a lot of time offline, you know, to try to streamline our meetings. And I, there was a couple of policies we had some questions about, but again, we got some reassurances that the recommended revision was in line with our operation procedure here. Uh, any other comments on those policies? If not, I'll call for a vote. All in favor of approving MSBA recommended revisions to the policies so enumerated, let them indicate by saying yay. 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 Any opposers? There be none. Motion passed unanimously. Next is uh, consider reviewing and discussing MB MSBA recommended new policies, policy BBBF, policy JEB, and policy JGCDA P. Have a motion. Second. Thank you, Mr. Oldham. Thank you, Mr. Jones. <laughs> Discussion. So again, this is a part of our process when we have new policies you know, that we have to consider. We only review and discuss those policies at our first meeting. Uh, a lot of times we see some of this stuff and we go home and think about it and maybe that's something that needs to be changed or we have to think about it. But that these were all new policies that came into play from MSBA. And the first policy was something about the, the school board member reimbursement and travel advances. And this policy dealt with reimbursement to the school board members as they go on to various different trips. So uh, it has a lot to do with receipts. You no, know, for our lunch and meals, that's not required a receipt, but all the other things we do do require receipts. And this policy, we just didn't have it in place before. So that's policy BBBF. Uh, the second policy was JEB, and it had to do with student tracking safety devices. You know, and these were, this is a new policy again, where some parents uh, may want to put tracking devices in their students, uh, maybe in their bags or whatever, but it's a policy dealing with how the school is going to address that issue. Do you have any comments on that? We haven't had any issues with it. Um, MSBA has recommended this policy. Um, so I, I, we brought it to the board so that you can, you can see we hadn't had an issue. It's okay. not to say that we won't have an issue. The problem is that with, with MS, what MSBA said is that if there's some kind of video attached to the tracking device, it's a violation of student privacy. Uh, I think it's video and audio okay. as well, yeah. You no, know, so you know it, it can be. I guess like those Apple little tags that can show a location, but that's about it. No kind of recording, no video, or audio piece. Of it. Okay. And then the next one, we we we've never had an issue where we needed um, Narcan, but we did talk to a um, pharmacist, and he said that it would be a good idea to have that on campus and have our nurses trained using it because you never know when that could be needed. And to add to that, um, I also did a little research on that when they were coming out with some of the drugs that are new that are targeting young children and young adults. Um, I was concerned about the Narcan because if the child didn't need it, what would be the result? And the result is it does nothing harmful to the child if the child doesn't need it. So it was pretty fell, fell through from what I can tell. <clears throat> You know, I know Ms. Burge had brought it up on previously about some of the rainbow colored fentanyl that goes around look, kind of looking like Skittles or something of that nature. I know it's a big problem in some places. Uh, again, not sure we've had any issues with it, but not to say we can't. 
But again, so the North came with something that would uh, be available in case we had an issue with it. So again, that is something for our consideration. These three policies were again were recommended by MSBA and uh, we will vote on that at our next meeting. Any other comments on those three policies? And the last one was, uh, was cons consider approving MSBA recommendation to rescind policy JD. Have a motion. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Burge. Thank you for the second, Mr. Jones. Take that. Discussion around this particular policy, policy JD, and it is a student discipline. And uh, this policy was recommended to be rescinded because of this policy, all the information that probably was contained in other policies. Mm -hmm. So it was just kind of like a duplicate of information. And so again, <clears> we <throat> have thousands of policies seem like, and it's trying to streamline uh, the policy and make sure everybody is aware of what we have. So it, it's not that this information is going away, it's just contained in other policies. Any other discussion? If not, I'll call for a vote. All in favor of approving MSBA recommendation to rescind policy JD, then indicate by saying yay. Yay. Any opposers? That be none. Motion passed unanimously. Next on our agenda is uh, consider approving MSBA recommendations. I'm sorry, consider discussing and completing the 2023 school board legislature survey. Have a motion. Motion. Thank you, Ms. Burge. Have a second. Thank you, Mr. Older. So again, we get this uh, report or this survey every year, and it asks us about some of the things that are going on within the state of Mississippi and also our own district, and just kind of asking the board's opinion about these things. And they take these surveys and they use it to consider other legislation. You know, sometimes they, you know, sometimes we see stuff the next year and sometimes we don't, but it's asking for the opinion of each board within the state of Mississippi. So what we normally do, we'll go around and just, we'll, I'll read the questions or the item and just ask for a response from the various districts. I think Ms. Quarterman is gonna take a survey and then we'll just tell her that. And then that will be the uh, report that goes back to MSBA. And if anybody has any questions about any particular item, feel free to ask <coughs> Dr. Bowen or some of the other administrators or whoever who may have relevant information about it. Okay. So, Mr. Martin, Martha Stewart. He's Stewart. I'm Martha Stewart. Yes, Martha Stewart. No, he's Stewart. Okay, so the quest first one was legislation that would increase school board members' compensation. So this is just asking with the board's opinion on should there be legislation to increase the compensation for our board members. You know, we get paid a lot, right? <laughs> <laughs> so district one. Uh, district two with no opinion. District four. Okay, Mr. Jones. Me, I'm four. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> you tricked me with me. You must not be in here. Okay. <laughs> I'm looking the wrong way. No opinion. Okay. And District 5. I oppose. Oppose. So that was two no opinions and two oppose. Mm -hmm. I can thank Mark and his. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Well, they, they, like anything else, be like a motion fail or something. Like, no opinion. All right, we'll go to the next one. <laughs> Legislation that would establish board member salary based on student enrollment. District one. Opposed. District two, no opinion. District four. Opposed. And district five. Opposed. Legislation that would require all school board members to be elected. District one. Support. District two, vote support. District four. Support. And district five. Support. Legislation that will restrict local control of school boards. District one. Opposed. District two is opposed. District four. Opposed. 
and District 5. Question five, legislation that would provide incentives to teachers to remain in education. District one. Four. District two votes support. District four. Support. District five. Okay. Legislation that would provide incentives for school districts to move to a year around calendar. Uh, I did have a question, I wanted to ask before we vote, I wanted to ask what does the administration think about that? <laughs> um, yeah. I no opinion. I don't have a good opinion. <laughs> but it, it was the question. Right. Incentive. It's, it's provide incentives. I would say opposed. Yeah, I would say opposed because that's still taking away local control. Yes. To a degree, because they're going to say you get this if you go to this. So they are putting their men in our full calendar, which we should have. We did have a calendar proposal last year that we voted on. Options. And one of them did go and go to them as much of the calendar. Very similar to what the other districts are doing that doing. And our teachers noted that that from the newness of it, they didn't like the idea of starting back in general. Okay. Any other questions about that? All right. District one. Oppose. District two votes. Oppose. District four. Oppose. And district five. Oppose. Okay. Question seven. Legislation that would address school board members' misconduct. I don't think we need an explanation on that, but do we? <laughs> district one. Support. District two votes support. District four. Oppose. We, Oppose. Have the, we have the Ethics Commission that's fully engaged. Mm -hmm. And District 5. Okay. Question 8. Legislation that will require each local school board to formally adopt a code of conduct for board members. District 1. Support. District 2 votes support. District 4. Support. And District 5. Support. Legislation that would change the public education funding formula from average daily attendance to total enrollment. No, this comes up quite often. Really? District one. I wanted to ask Dr. Bowen, what would her response be? <laughs> but, um, right now, it's based on average of the, the percent of students who are here every day. What we want it to be is the number of enrollment. So we're getting funded based on how many present days our students have, not how many kids we have in our class. Like we still have to have school whether a kid shows up right. or a kid doesn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the resources that you have is gonna change, not gonna change regardless of how many students show up. Once you set the number of students and staff, whether the students show up or not, you're gonna still have that same number of people here. So if you have the average daily attendance that's just numbered, then you would lose some of your funding. Yes, sir. I will say support, man. Okay. District two votes. Support. District four. Support. And district five. Support. Thank you. Question 11. Legislation that would fully fund the public education funding, MAEP. District one. Support. District two vote support. District four. Support. And district five. Uh, this question 11. Legislation that would create a structured statewide approach to quality in early childhood education. Again, I had a little question about this. So I would ask again, Dr. Bowman and your I, team. I did some research on it and I think states are going towards a, much, a more um, structured approach. However, Miss, the state of Mississippi is in the lead um, with early childhood education. So do we need legislation around it? I'm not sure because we're already doing what we need to do for our, our 
So it sounds like if we if they were to introduce some statewide uh, structured legislation that it could erode some of the progress that we have here in this and district. This includes the child care as well as early head start and those type of things. Anybody, I see you, you mouthing something. What we need is funding for that. And that's what yes. the legislation should be. We're gonna, yeah. we're gonna do that funding. Yeah, I, I, I read that, maybe I'll read it differently. The state to step in and say, stronger early childhood education. And to me, that's a glaring yes. Like we, we need stronger early childhood. Statewide. Statewide. But maybe I'm reading that wrong. Um, we do not have, we don't have, we don't have mandated pre K in equal to the state across the United States. Like, we have pre K in the world. Okay. You know, I initially, had support down here, but I'm wondering if we are leading in, in that area, if you come up with some statewide approach to quality education, would it, you don't know what that would be, and then would it erode what we're doing here? I guess we didn't, we don't have to stop doing anything if it's above what the, what the state legislation would uh, call for. Okay, other comments? District one. Support. District two vote support. District four. Support. And district five. Support. Okay. Legislation that would eliminate the requirement of pass and end of course test to graduate. Dr. Bowen, please. I need some help with that. <laughs> I don't like the wording of this, and, and Ms. Albert can talk about it, but the way it's worded, it says eliminate the requirement of, a pa of passing the end of course test. We would love to eliminate the, those requirements, but we need a requirement, but we think it should be the ACT, but the ACT is not an end of course test. Um, what do you think about it, Ms. Albert? I agree with Dr. Franklin. We don't want to we don't want to eliminate checks and balances for students. So I agree, Dr. Bowen and I are on the same page with we want the ACT to show us our indicator of this test um, and the work piece assessment. And we've seen that that was the indicator for success in the state. We're doing a phenomenal job in that area. But because in a course assessment, take the wide range of of our point system, it does skew, but why are our points Why are they taking the course assessments in four areas? And then they're taking that ACT work piece, their senior and senior year, which is what matters to their college career life. So I, yes, and of course, but as a high school principal, I don't want us to take away the accountability piece of a success of a high school I think that was just you know when I, as I sit here and look at this question and read it says legislation that would eliminate the requirement of a pass at the end of course test to graduate so it tells me that there's always a requirement to pass a test at the end of each course to graduate I'm not sure if I'm reading that correctly it's the four courses English two U.S. history biology one and um, algebra one so you have to pass a test at the end of that course. So, yes, and and if you don't pass that test, then you won't be eligible to graduate. Yes, however, there are some stop, stop gates. Okay. Yeah. Multiple times. So if that is eliminated, they get multiple times of remediation. We're blessed in our district that our, we have a lot of good things in place for our students that are not successful on that first go round that we can get them successful as we move forward. There needs to be some kind of a accountability. Have to have some kind of integrity to uh, high school reform. There needs to be something that says, "Yes, I've met the requirements." Uh, 
That's sort of just all that it needs to be either or. Not well, is there, is, there, is there an alternative? Is this is just addressing the end of the course test yeah. without giving give consideration to any kind of accountability in, other, in another area to be able to make sure you have it. Yes, just every year I feel like this question shows up and I can't help but think about a young man probably five, six years ago that had done well through school. I think he was an average student, yeah. um, but he got to that test that he had to take. And I don't know if it was nerves or if maybe he didn't know the material or wasn't prepared, but he failed that test and was not able to walk with his classmates. And it was just devastating for me. I wasn't on the board at the time, but I just was devastated for that young man. And so every time it comes through on my end, I would rather leave it in the teacher's hands to say, okay, yes, my student knows what he's doing. He's had his test throughout the year. He's tested well or he's done well and, and have this. Yeah, I'm just not a fan. Of the last two years, we've not had any issue with it because of and then our test score has this school year currently that is sitting senior, but we do have an early correct. So it, it could, it could pop up this year because we're back to testing and we don't have all senior waivers. So yes, it happened. Um, I think it goes back to, I mean, you as a board. Do you think, as a state, they should tie graduation to a EOC exam? It's their stop gate is in third grade and is in high school. But if third grade is not stopping them from graduating, it is, it stops them for, you know, proceeding forward to fourth grade. All states, the last time we, I think the board asked us, and I don't know if this board member remembers, it's been a few years, y'all requested how many states actually require that and I don't want to quote both at all the box. Um, but the all states do not require the SC to graduate. They require a part accountability, but it's not necessarily tied to a student walking and graduating and earning it. So I think that is it goes back to what the Fraser said. That's the question. It should be tied to a student graduating. Yeah. I mean, I, I certainly think there needs to be some type of accountability in, in anything you do. There needs to be some kind of measure. But any of the question is, you know, like you have a student that spent all this time in, in class doing the work, and then there's one test that they have to take. And if they don't do well on that one test, then they don't graduate. I'm assuming these students, that they pass the class itself, but they just fail. No, not, sometimes they'll fail the, the class and the test. Um, sometimes they'll fail one or the other. But if, if, they, um, if they fail the class and the test, then... They, 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 they would take the class and the test. Yeah, they, have to, they wouldn't graduate anyway then. Yes, they have yeah. Our students have multiple retake opportunities. Okay, okay. And that's why it is, it happens, but it's more rare. Our students have multiple opportunities. <laughs> and we have embedded communication courses. Yeah. But it's for the role on ACT is 17 or higher in a fourth volume year. And there's a chart that they use to explore a B in the class. Their test score is not passing, but is at this level, and they get a free pass because their classroom grade is good. Okay. Even at a D, if you one point from passing the test, you can get a pass on the test because you have a B in the class. Not a very wide scale, which are fairly close together. But there are some other options. A lot of things put in place to help remediate kids to keep their students and we're very successful at that. And Burgess White, there have been instances of students not able to talk about it. It's rare unless any class is too well. Okay. Sorry. I got a question. Mr. Jones had a question. All right. I'm trying to get a get a grasp of this. This is not a test that's like English test developed by the English teacher and given to the class like a final exam. This is a state level state test. State test. So that's taking the control out of the local school district and then putting it more on studying for the test. Is that true? 
the test is based on the curriculum that we are teaching. The state requires us to teach. The standards, objectives, every teacher is teaching. It has to work. Test at the end of that time. So in December, we'll have kids take a test for English 2, Algebra 1, U.S. History, biology. That will determine whether, you know, what they need to do further. If they pass the test, they're good to go. If they fail, they'll remediate and retake until they pass. They get that graduation mark on We have had that happen. How does eliminating the requirement for passing those tests affect our instructors delivering the course material? If they don't have that requirement or that bar, do they have to go that change anything from your perspective as far as your instructors go and it, teachers? It doesn't change, but if, if tomorrow they told us to do the PAC, well, we, we saw it for when we started with COVID. Our teachers are still going to teach. They're going to teach high quality. You lose your student buy-in and knowing that that kind of graduation. That's what we saw very um, I did, Mr. Smith, pulled it up 13 states. That is, that is great. Only 13 states have EOCs graduation. One of those 13 that um, every week on Article 3 is to have a lot of questions. 13 states would be hard to do. All right, so again, the, the question is, right now, there is a requirement to pass a end of course test in order to graduate, regardless of how the stu student does in that class. And so we ask you, do we support eliminating that requirement and then using other methods to make sure that the child does make, is proficient in that? Okay, ready? That's confusing. Support. <laughs> <laughs> All I right. jumped ahead of the back. The wet, uh, the Dist <laughs> Dist District one both support. District two both support. District four support. And District Five. Support. Okay. Thank you for that detailed understanding explanation. Legislation that would increase qualifications for individuals running for the local school board. District One. No opinion. District Two votes support. District Four opposed. And District Five. Four. Legislation that would allow for a salary supplement for experienced teachers willing to re relocate to an F-rated school district. In that one discuss. I, I had a question about this. I looked at that question. You know, uh, so they gave me an incentive to experienced teachers to relocate to an F-rated school district would that have the effect of actually drawing good teachers from our district if you're paying them to go to other districts? If you have a, a good teacher here and they see an opportunity to go somewhere else to an F-rated school with a higher salary, we would end up kind of eroding our staff here. So that's that's kind of how I'd see that thing. So I'm, at least that's what I'm thinking in my mind. Dr. B? Do you all have an opinion? Do you want to it is legislation that would allow for a salary supplement for experienced teachers willing to relocate to an F-rated school district. I agree with you. Yeah, because it didn't say anything about uh, geographical boundaries, so it could be anywhere. <laughs> we have had, for example, we've had teachers leave us to go to Louisiana in years past. But we saw the reverse of that this year. Teachers that left us seven or eight years ago came back yeah. to us. Because of the pay raise, there was no longer a major difference in the standard of the state. Okay. Any other questions? I think they should pay them more anyhow. Yeah. Yeah, All that, of them. That's my thing about it is, and the way that I read that is that I just, I feel like our teachers are so underpaid already that we need to allow them any and every opportunity to continue 
to get competitive pay rates. And so that's the reason District 1 would support that. Okay. District 1? Support. <laughs> District 2 is opposed. District 4? I support. And District 5? I support. Okay. Legislation that would allow for public funds to be diverted from public schools to non-public schools, home schools, or virtual schools by means of vouchers, tuition tax, credits, or scholarships. District one. Opposed. District two votes opposed. District four. Opposed. And district five. Legislation that would allow public charter schools in district with successful accountability ratings of A, B, or C. District one. Opposed. District two votes opposed. District four. Opposed. And district five. Opposed. Okay. Legislation that would provide incentives to people majoring in education and or people seeking an alternative route license. District one. Support. District two votes support. District four. Support. And district five. Legislation that would provide financial incentives to consolidate schools. <laughs> district one. Opposed. District two, no opinion. District four. Coin toss, oppose. And district five. No opinion. <laughs> so it is a coin toss. <laughs> so we had two of those that we didn't come to a consensus on. So we'll just kind of. I think I can leave them blank. I'll just Circle both one. oppose and no opinion. I will. <laughs> I will. Okay. Question 19. What are your board's top priorities for the upcoming legislative session? So yeah, I know that was a lot of things that, you know, well, everybody got something different on their mind. So I'm not sure how we're gonna come to consensus, but I, I did have one thing that kind of popped up in my mind. And uh, I know we still, we're still starting to see um, the grades may be showing on a, an effect from the COVID year. So I'm wondering if the legislation need to really do something or just kind of look at the core learning, learning that we missed out due to COVID period. So I, I just see that as an issue. My opinion? Yes, sir. If they would come up with legislation to reduce legislation concerning education. <laughs> <laughs> Too much legislation. Oh, I wish you would write that in. <laughs> I love that one. I'm, I'm sure she can capture whatever. How did he put that? Legislation to reduce legislation. I love that. <laughs> I think that's the cleverest thing you've said all year, Mr. Jones. I love it. <laughs> Write that down. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Roy, anything? I would just like to ask our, our interim superintendent what yeah. your suggestion would be. I think um, the a changing the ADA to the total enrollment would help us with funding. Um, and then, of course, incentives for teachers that we don't pay teachers enough, even with the pay raise that they receive. <laughs> Mr. Oldham? Yeah, no, I think my whole thought process over here is just kind of hung up on the funding piece. So that's provides a little bit more specific. Yes. Um, but we can't give up pushing them to fully fund MAP. Yeah. But there shouldn't be a law to enact, I mean, to, to require them to follow their own law. You know? MAP is their own form. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's one more thing that I would like to see. Um, Ms. Alford, what do they call the um, the scholarships they give over in Louisiana? Uh, um, tops, you're talking tops. about? Tops. We need some sort of program like that in our state for our students. You can, you can put all that down. You can get it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be able to I'm going to use a typewriter. Oh, yeah, that's great. Just bulletize it. Okay, and number 20, uh, 
what are some of the top issues that are currently in your district? District one. Dr. Bowman. <laughs> <laughs> it's not an issue. Some of our top issues in our district that we need to. Legislation. Do y'all want to talk? Um, do y'all have top issues? It says, what are the top issues that are currently direct, um, currently in your district? Yeah, I'm not sure you talk about legislation. What are the top I issues? It's about, well, top issues. Attendance is an issue. Yeah. Um, we have a truancy officer for a couple of weeks. Well, what happened? Did they, did she quit already. So, y'all were rough on her? <laughs> yeah. So attendance is, is an issue and the supporting us as far as, you know, with attendance. Mm -hmm. I know that's what. Yeah, and, and when I read this, it didn't really ask about legislation, so I'm just going to say ask about the top issue. So here it goes. Well, I don't want a whole little. <laughs> On the spot. Hello. Well, it's part of this, this local really goes as one that is used every single day. Um, it, it's not a matter of if it can be more expensive, it's a matter of necessity. Um, you've had a child already have to um, have the ambulance called. Uh, Central Hospital. I'm not sure about the transportation, but when it's at the elementary and when kids that little use it, they don't know if they're too hot. Um, they don't know if they're too cold. Um, I mean, it's, it's just like when we swim with my niece, we have to make her sit down and take a second to catch her breath. They, they don't realize that. So when you have a facility that you're using and children who don't know how to communicate, hey, I'm too hot, I need to take a second to sit down. And then you also have a sport that's using it, which that goes against Title IX because you also have another gym, which is facilitating girls and boys basketball that is air conditioned. It's not up to the same bar, um, which is I mean, I, I know hats off to the people who play with no AC. Um, it couldn't be me. Um, but it's 2022, and when it's used every single day by children of that age, and it's going against Title IX, it's a matter of necessity. Um, that, that's my opinion. Um, and the opinion of those I represent. Okay. So something that historical buildings maintenance. <laughs> it's kind um, of as, as far as cost goes, I don't know if um, you can do this, but there are members of our community 
who are local, who love the school enough and have enough money to be willing to make it happen. Um, there are some that the foundation can reach out to, to and that will. Yeah. All right, well, I, I did have one other thing I wanted to uh, mention. You know, we, we continue to see issues with school security across the nation. So it, in terms of my mind, I know that's always going to be a big issue, school security as well. Yeah. Is that? Mr. Frazier, something that Elementary would like to add would be uh, mental health and class size. Mm. And that would... Mental health and class size. Mm -hmm. If we can capture all that on that document as we pass it back up to MSB. Thank you. Thank you for that uh, input and thank you for that discussion. It certainly uh, it helps us out as a board because certainly not being in your school on a day-to-day -day basis, that's a lot of things we don't see. So we really depend on the administration to provide us with feedback, you know, and just kind of help us out with some of the decision and the discussion because you guys, you see it on a daily day basis. So you know what you need more than we do. We're here to kind of help the school, to assist the school to achieve the results. So we appreciate that input and the candidate as well. Thank you. All right, the next thing was- Wait, wait, wait. Yep. And I need a motion to adopt this as- completed. That's true. We just made a motion and second. There was it's, no vote on it. We're gonna, we filled it out, so we need to vote on it after we filled it Consider out. Consider discussion completed. Okay, well, is it complete? Okay. I just need a motion to approve the MSBA survey as complete. Uh, I make a, can I have a motion to consider the MSBA, let's say, survey complete? Motion. Thank you, Ms. Burge. Have a second. Second. Thank you, Ms. Holder. Call for a vote. All in favor of, of considering the survey complete, let them indicate by saying yay. 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 Any the opposers? There'll be none. Motion passed unanimously. I'm not sure we needed a motion that though. Um, I could have voted. <laughs> I'll make the final vote. That's yeah. all right. It works. Yeah, it works, but I'm not sure we didn't have to. Consider discussing and setting a date for the annual school board walkthrough inspection. So again, you know, we are required to spend as a board member of seven hours each year in the school. And we have chosen in the past to do that as a group. And we do these board walkthroughs. Uh, typically it's kind of done sometime in November. So we're asking for a date to actually do that now. I am only available the first week of November. The first week of November. Or I can do de into December. Get some of that good December cafeteria food, maybe. maybe. <laughs> Christmas dinner. We have to come up with a date and then just do one time. Yeah. You know, I know in the past we've always done it after the new the election because the new board members are generally kind of accompany us on those walkthroughs if there be any. And, uh, but you say you can only do the first week of November. Usually we try to work it around um, testing with the different schools. And that's kind of hard because we've got elementary, middle school and high school involved. You, you have something you want to say? Already over. Yeah, it's about our school, our school <laughs> board. Yeah, we have post. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Anybody else on the date? Like December 1st or 2nd? Dr. Bowman, do y'all have any dates in mind? Um, I said, did y'all, do you have dates for state tests for December? 
I see work key. We have work keys the third week of November. Third week of November. Yes, yeah, so that's not a good week. I think December 1st. Um, that's a Thursday. It's the, the week before a school board meeting. One week before. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to pull one of those all dayers again. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, and I, I've often thought about doing the, these all day meetings where we tune all the schools toward midway toward the end. A lot of the board members seem to be kind of getting disengaged. So it, it, it turns into a long day. And then we have to do the uh, uh, feedback toward the end of it. Anyway, it, it makes for a long day, but. Uh, you know, I've, I've often thought maybe we need to do it in two days, but I know that takes a lot of time. As long as half days, that's yeah. doable. You know, the, I know towards the, it seems like to me that toward the end, when we take a full day, the, the schools will be two on the end of it kind of get short change, seems like to me, and you're not to kind of disengage and then people just got other things on their mind, but what they need to do toward the end of the day. Mr. Fraser, Fridays work better for me, but I can make other days work if everybody else. Second of December, Friday. I think I can do this. I, <laughs> I clear my schedule. How <laughs> <laughs> about you, Eli? Second if it's no, it's no. It's yeah, right. I mean, it, is, it is what it is. Uh, it's 50 50. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think we can make it work. Y'all have any issues with this in a second? Let's do it another week. Huh? You don't need the changes. He's got something already on the calendar. Yeah, I mean, if, if you got somewhere to plan, I mean, I understand. Could you do the first? I could do the first. But not the second. Okay, I, I, I said it's better. I didn't say it wasn't an option. It would the first be a problem? December 1st? That's a Thursday. No real chatter I think it works. Some of us work for us. Let's do that. Okay, December. I'll make a motion we'll do December first. So second. Mr. Jones made a motion to do December first and this very second then. Well. I feel disconnected. <laughs> Call for a vote. All in favor of setting December 1st as our board walkthrough, let them indicate be saying yay. 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 Any opposers? <clears throat> there be none. Motion passed unanimously. So, Dr. Bobin, we'll be kind of depending on you to kind of set up the dates, I mean, the timing for this okay. and where we'll start that at. Okay. All right. Could I have a motion to consider approving to set a meeting for October 25th, 2022, beginning at 10 a.m. to receive the MSBA Superintendent Search Committee report. Motion. Thank you, Ms. Burge. Would have a second? Second. Thank you, Ms. Oda. Any discussion on that? We, we plan on doing that at the uh, Endeavor facility yes, sir. starting at 10 a.m. And that meeting will start as a open meeting, but then we'll end up going into a closed session because of the information that we'll be discussing. So it'll start as an open meeting, but we'll go into a closed session. All right, I'll call for a vote. All in favor of approving October 25th, 2022, beginning at 10 a.m. to receive the MSBA Superintendent Search Committee report. Let me say saying yay. 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 Any opposers? there be none. Motion passed unanimously. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. Can I have a motion to go into closed session to determine if we need to go into an executive session? Motion. Thank you, Ms. Burge. I have a second. Thank you, Ms. Older. All in favor of going into closed session to 
term we need to go into executive session. Let the NKB saying yay. 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 Any opposers? There be none. Nine close.